Hello, let's talk about the use of continuous glucose monitoring in primary care, or CGM. Now, we in primary care, and particularly in the management of our patients with diabetes, typically we're looking at logbooks. Logbooks can have great data, but we've learned that that data isn't always accurate, and it's not always really reflective of all this going on with the patients. We also have the hemoglobin A1C, which is a great measure that's been around for some 30 years now. It's well validated in studies to, co to correlate with complications and many other things. We know the A1C represents an average or a mean average glucose over a period of time between eight and 12 weeks. Now we also know that there are a number of things that can affect that average. Chronic kidney disease, blood loss, anemia, hemoglobinopathies. Even with that, and that average, we can see an A1C represents a blood sugar that is constantly flowing between a very narrow range, or that average can be peaks and troughs that go through that same period of time. So the need is clear for something a little bit beyond the A1C to give us a better idea of what's going on with our patients. This is where I think continuous glucose monitoring, or CGM, has the real advantage. If we were to think of comparing the CGM tracings that we can get to the spot blood sugars, which are, represent blood sugars at a point in time, that's like taking a photo. If we look at the CGM, it's representing a complete movie. So would you rather try to figure out what's going on with the story by looking at a few photos through the story or seeing the whole story? And that's how I see CGM, is providing additional information about these patients aggregating large amount of data and summarizing it and organizing it into actionable information. Now, I can give you a case of this that helps you understand why I think this works. We had a 75-year-old lady who came in who was on a sulfonylurea, a low dose of a sulfonylurea over time. She had complained of a few episodes of uh, the spells but it was notable that her hemoglobin A1C was at 7%. Many would think that would be good. We'll send her out on her same medication and look for another reason for her spells. We decided to put a CGM on her, and we found that she was one of these people with one of these large fluctuations. Despite her hemoglobin A1C of 7%, she was spending 30% of her time hypoglycemic with blood sugars less than 70 milligrams per deciliter and most of that was overnight when she was completely unaware. And with that overnight hypoglycemia, it put her at increased risk for cardiovascular events. So I hope that this brief case shows you that the value of the CGM beyond the A1C helps to put that A1C in context of how did you get there. It has been said that if the A1C is your destination, the CGM can show you how to get there. Access to CGM is not uniform, but you can check your specific carriers for how access works for you. There are two basic forms of uh, CGM. There's the professional use, where you own the equipment and you place it on the patient and you send them out and they come back, you scan the report and you get a report from that. It's very similar to a Holter monitor if you've used that before. The other form is called a personal CGM device where the patient actually owns the sensor and the device. They have a reader that comes with it, and many of them are now have an app that they can put on the phone. They can generate the reports. They have an option to upload those reports to you through the cloud, or they can bring their device in, and you can download it into your office practice. In any event, in either way that you do this, the report that is generated, which is called an ambulatory glucose profile, or an AGP, I like to think of it as the EKG of glucose. It is a report that summarizes a full 14 days, up to 14 days of data into one tracing as if it occurred in one day, but it shows you the highs, the lows, and what it gives you a detailed report of what the averages are, but it allows you to see those things that you might not pick up on the spot glucose checks that you get with the finger sticks. And it certainly allows you to see things that you could never see with an A1C. So I really hope that you will consider using CGM in your practice. There are a number of tools and resources available
to help you work it into your specific workflow. The AAFP has a program for CME credit that you can access on their website about how to incorporate CGM into your practice. Additionally, there are other resources through the manufacturers and on the web and actually through the American Diabetes Association on how to get started with CGM. I hope that you will consider this in your practice to help you take better care of your patients living with diabetes.